This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I will explain limit order books and trade execution. Our focus today is a simplified look at how trading takes place on exchanges. For example, the trading of cash equities or futures contracts. We'll restrict attention to limit orders. So think of both buyers and sellers submitting orders to the exchange and these orders specify whether they're a buy or a sell, the maximum size to trade and the limit price. Now for a buyer the limit price is the maximum they will pay per share or contract whereas for a seller the limit price is the minimum price they will accept per share or contract. Now it's an obvious but important point that every trade needs both a buyer and a seller. The exchange's job here is to decide which buy orders can trade with which sell orders and vice versa. This process is called matching and it determines whose orders get completed. Orders that are as yet unfilled are what appear on the limit order book. We'll see an example in a moment. Now matching is done according to strict matching rules and various matching rules are used in different markets around the world. The one we'll look at today is called price time matching. It's the simplest and most popular. For example, it gets used in cash equities trading. But other matching rules are sometimes used. For example, price pro rata or price time pro rata matching. You'll find these in some short term interest rate futures markets. It's also worth saying that not everything gets traded on exchanges. Some contracts are traded over the counter or OTC or sometimes traded in dark pools. We won't have a chance to look at these today. Here's a really simple illustration to show how a price time limit order book operates. We'll have three buy orders and three sell orders. So B1 is an order to buy up to 10 shares for a maximum price of 99. And S2, for example, is an order to sell up to 20 shares for a minimum price of 101. We need to know the order in which these buys and sells arrive in order to construct the limit order book. So here's a worked example. Let's assume B1 arrives. There's nothing to fill against, so it enters the limit order book. Then B2 arrives. Again, nothing to fill against, so it's added to the limit order book. Now S1 arrives. We now have a match. B1 has priority as it arrived first. This is the time aspect of price time matching. So B1 gets completely filled, leaving 20 shares to part fill against B2. The depth at 99 will therefore reduce to 20. Now B3 arrives, it's added to the book. S2 arrives, it's also added to the book. Now S3 arrives, we have a match again. B3 will get part filled and the final limit order book will look like this. So let's see what happens now if we reverse S1 and B3 in the order things play out. So now we have that all the buys arrive first and then all the sells arrive. So we'll start off the same as with B1 and B2 as in the previous example. Then B3 arrives and it also gets added to the book. Now when S1 arrives, which is an order to sell at 99, we have a match again. But priority is first determined by price. So buys at 100 have priority over buys at 99. And then priority is determined by time. So B1 will have priority over B2, even though both of them are at the same price, because B1 arrived there first. And finally S2 and S3 arrive. The final limit order books shown here are described as 100 to 101 in the first case and 99 to 100 in the second. What I'm doing is quoting the best bid and the best ask prices to describe their state. It should be clear from this that the order in which things happen is important for determining how the limit order book evolves. It's important to note that market participants see only the total depth at each price level and not the individual orders only the exchange sees those. Additionally, when orders get matched and filled, they are done so anonymously. Neither counterparty sees who their order was matched with. We finish by looking at trade execution, 
So let's assume we have an order of size L to do and a time horizon T in which to complete it. Let's draw this graph. We have a time axis and an axis showing the amount that's been traded so far. And at time zero, we have zero completed. And at time t, we must have L completed. So we must end up here. We have a choice. We can either trade against orders already displayed on the limit order book, or we can join the limit order book and wait for someone to trade against us. The first is called liquidity taking and the second liquidity providing and there are pros and cons to each. Let's have a look at those in this table. So if I'm a liquidity taker I get to trade straight away and the risk of the price moving adversely over the course of my trading period is going to be low. I'll call this price risk. This low price risk arises because I'm targeting worse prices. Conversely if I'm a liquidity provider I will target more favourable price levels but I'll end up taking longer to trade and therefore be exposed to higher price risk. Now if the order size L is large then dropping it as a single order onto the limit order book would provide obvious signalling of my trading intentions and lead to price impact. In this case it makes sense to chop the order into slices and release these slices gradually over the trading period. So going back to the graph, we might have an even trading profile like this, or might trade more quickly at the start if we were concerned about price risk. That's all for this episode on limit order books and trade execution. Thanks very much.